Fakataka te hau ki tūru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga Kia mā kina kina kiuta, kia mā taratara ki tai We i aka ena tātou kura he teo, he hoka he hauhu Ti he mauri ora Kia ora tātou, kia ora ko Puoro Jerome tēnei um, Today, uh, this is, uh, my name is Puoro Jerome I'm coming to you from, uh, I call it the Whare Make Pai That's the um, Lilburn House um, uh, uh, here in Thornden in uh, Whanganui Atara, um, currently the composer in residence at um, Victoria University, the Tagoki New Zealand School of Music. So that's quite an um, awesome year for us and quite humbling to be in this position. And uh, I'm currently in the whare here playing my porotu paunamu. So that's what you heard at the start there. That's a beautiful porotu, which is a long type of sort of kowowo. Um, flute um, that's made out of ponamu. This is a really big one too and um, it's beautiful. I've had this for a while and was made by a good friend uh, that lives in down on the Taihauaru in the west coast of the way Ponamu. Um, a brother down there called Clint, he made this beautiful one uh, after I um, visited Te Taipotini and shared with the Tauira there doing the Ponamu course, carving course. Um, met some awesome people there years ago and they were making these beautiful um, taonga and learning how to carve ponamu so I went along there one year and was sharing um, my porotu matai which I'm going to play for you now yeah anyway I was sharing some of my whanau of puro with the students there and um, towards the end, um, uh, my friend uh, Clint, who was doing the course, he came over to have a look at this porotu matai. So this one's made from the matai tree. And he was studying the construction and he was looking at it and he was really, he loved that one. This one's made by um, uh, Matua Brian Flintoff. And uh, I got given that years ago um, when I was living in London. Matua Brian made it for us and sent it over to us in London so we got it in the mail which was really cool and um, been playing it ever since um, all over the place and um, yeah so our, my uh, good friend Clint um, he was looking at that and um, yeah I guess he had a special connection with that portal too and a year later when I came back he had made one out of Ponamu so, um, you know, it's not an exact replica or anything like that, but just inspired by that, um, he made one out of Ponamu, which is really special. Yeah, both really special, there's Puro 2, and um, I like um, playing them on many occasions, much like the Kowowo, pretty multifunctional, um, but quite soft sound too, um, and, um, and the birds, they love the Puro 2 Matai, they have a lot of interactions with Manu when I'm playing out in the Putaya. And um, yeah, and once I received the Puro to Ponamu, that was quite a different experience. Um, there was sort of in a time when I started to realize that our Puro um, have a great um, ability to help our Fano um, in their healing journeys. Yeah. So, of course, the process always for me is to use it on myself first before I start sharing it in that way with other people. Um, so, yeah, I did that. Um, being such a big piece, or two, it's actually two pieces of ponamu that have been carved and hollowed out and then joined back together to make this one porotu ponamu. Um, so when I first um, got given the porotu ponamu, um, Clint asked me oh play, can you play it and so I started to play and um, there were a few people around at the time that were sort of gathered around to listen to the sound of the porotu ponamu and um, and uh, there was a lot of water coming out of the bottom like drips like you know the same that sort of matutu to those drips that come I don't know out of a tap or out of, on the river banks um, yeah, more than that was coming from my mouth or anything like that. I wasn't dribbling into it. Um, it just started to 
years I played it, more and more it started to drip water. So we, because of that experience, um, we named this one Tangiwe. And um, and that is a type of um, uh, a type of ponamu, but it's not what this ponamu is. This is not Tangiwe, but her name is Tangiwe. So our puro, just like you and me, have their own personal names. Eh? So this the the type of um, taonga puro this is is a porotu. It's a porotu ponamu, a porotu made of ponamu, and. Um, after that experience, which happens a lot, um, we named that Tangiwai. And um, yeah, when that was happening and those drips were coming out of the bottom uh, of the Purutu as we were playing it, a lot of people saw that and witnessed that. And for some reason, well, I think because of that and because of the beautiful sound, uh, people that were gathered there got very emotional and some of our whanau there were having a tangi themselves. So that was kind of my first introduction to the power of the porotu ponamu, this one tangi way. And um, so since then, uh, what I've noticed the porotu ponamu is good for when we're, when we're in the Oruwatua or we're in a haora context or when we're playing for with the intention of healing and encouraging others to heal the self-healing thing um, uh, it it makes people cry yeah so we've got two different real that are in within the porotu ponamu and it's always like that eh? we got the tahawahine and the tahatane so I'm going to play the tahawahine sound first because I started off the session by playing the tahatane and um, this is the tahawahine So that's a more sort of higher pitched um, uh, sound for our tahawahine and that's the sound really that really gets in that I've noticed in our time sharing our uruatua um, if I'm walking around playing the porotu ponamu um, usually that's the one that will get people uh, expressing their grief and having a cry and, um, and just in my observations a lot of people don't like to cry they you know we're really not everybody but i'd say on a whole we're mostly not encouraged to cry and you'll notice if um, someone uh, spontaneously cries because of something's upset them or something's inspired them to shed some tears uh, most people will apologize eh? and that's a big for me that's a big tohu around gee you know that's the state of it we when we cry we apologize and um, I always like to remind our whanau out there, wherever I am in the world, that that's a natural tool that's built into our body, a natural process. And um, our kuia had a beautiful one that um, she would say, if you imagine you are rako, itawaunui ao tāne, if you are this tree in the forests of tāne, on the, in the great forest, and um, perhaps a mighty daughter or something like that. When we cry, we water the trunk of our tree and we're able to grow. Yeah. But, she said, if you hold your tears in, the inside of the trunk of your tree starts to rot, basically. And then you'll fall down, you know. Ko hinga koe. And, um, Yes, I always remembered the sort of imagery that was painted through those those quarter wind stories of our nan, encouraging us to, that's okay to cry, eh? Um, particularly where I grew up in sort of rural Aotearoa and Taihope, you know, very big farming community, very big um, uh, rugby community, all that sort of stuff. Um, no one was really encouraged to cry, eh? Usually you might get a hiding if you if you cry because you know it's uh, you know that all those sort of kiwaha pakeha I guess those 
sayings that we'd hear harden up um, stop being a girl stop being a sissy all that sort of stuff was quite um, common eh? common called it all around um, you know just having a natural having a tangi so um, yeah, not to go on about it too much but it's quite important to express those um, yeah you know those things it's a, it's a really it's a tool tangi is a tool for us to express and vent um, uh, emotion you know and like my nan said if you hold it in that's when you're going to have problems so um, so yeah that's the tangi way that's the so what I've noticed is um, particularly for our tāne Māori that's something um, that uh, I noticed helps so um, I'll go back to a memory of doing a session with um, one of our brothers over in Perth and um, he had been through a breakup and he was kind of holding it together for a good couple of six or seven months probably didn't have anybody to talk to about his breakup um, continuing to work continuing to sort of um, maintain his stance and his his life you know and um, he came you know especially wanting wanting to do a session uh, because uh, he hadn't had time to deal with the separation so um, he you know he lay down there and we got the a going and we were playing all our different pool it wasn't until we picked up the tangi way and started to play um, into his narco space so I usually just sit down by the whanau and then play direct directing right into the heart yeah and that's been there's been quite a few occasions with our tāne where that's helped them a lot to release those tears and so our brother was lying there and he, you know um, one little tear started to roll out of his eyes and then boom it all came out yeah and so we just keep playing that playing that playing that wahine the high pitch sound that's what usually gets right in there and then unblocks that water and then out it comes and then once that sort of comes out and that's expressed then we go back to the tane the soft um, deeper sound I should say this one of my learning comes from being right in the experience and then sort of you know the the kupu rongwa for me is about observing so I'm observing what's happening what's happening with me even what's happening with the whanau um, in the oroa tua because we're all in there together so it's just about observing and a lot of uh, beautiful kōrero comes through in that time when we're right in the bubble um so yeah, playing to the heart, playing into the heart, particularly for our, and not limited to, eh, because um, obviously our wahine benefit from that too. Um, but yeah, that was some of the kōrero I wanted to share with you around the porotu, particularly the porotu pōnamu, I feel like that has a lot of uh, benefits and um, it has a lot of power in terms of releasing tears. So because it brings the tears um, and um, you know we play the tangi way at, at tangihana time because um, you know that's the time to release as well uh, um, yeah, and I'm just trying to think when we play tangi way also uh, mostly that's kind of for me is the main function of that is really to get that um, to to hope to unblock the the water, you know, and get the water running freely again. Um, in terms of my pool to matai, uh, what I talked about um, previously was that that one there seemed to have a lot of interactions with manu. Um, and um, w- one occasion that springs to mind was when I was on the banks of Topo Nuiatia there, um, and. Um, I was sitting under a kōwhai tree playing 
and I had about eight or nine tui come into the that um, that um, sit in that tree and um, beautiful songs and and um, I was just playing along there and then they started to sort of like play a lot and swirling around and um, kind of like having little wrestles with each other in the air and um, yeah, and they really started to respond to the different sounds. So, and I was playing quite fast in that one, like this. Um, yeah, and I guess that was um, invigorating them, and then they were having a good play there, and it was such a cool thing to be sitting under that rako and seeing those two e playing like that too so, um, have heaps of experiences with Manu um, when playing this uh, Purutu Matai um, uh, I think that's enough for that one um, that's the Purutu Pounamu uh, Dangiwai and the Purutu Matai um, one thing I'd like to add before I go is that I have heard some call it all that Purutu may be a transliterated name um, to mean flute um, but um, you know that's just one quarter I thought I'd share with you um, and um, that's just around the name so and um, remembering too in different kind of rohe we go and there's going to be different names for the different types of pool or there's just really not just one name for that type of in- instrument say those different pool or um, if you're lucky enough to have people in your rohe that hold those kōrero, then, uh, you know, then uh, I encourage everyone to use the different names of uh, that are associated with Fano and hapu, and then, you know, iwi and different rohe. And um, a lot of those uh, kōrero and clues are in Motetia and, um, and then, um, you know, and then we can start to use those two. So, mihi o te rā, mihi o te wā, and uh, kanu te aroha ki a tātou. Thanks for listening um, about our kōrero on Porotu. Nā mihi. Mm-hmm.